In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate muscle energy for the radial head, specifically for anterior and posterior radial head dysfunctions. So starting with an anterior radial head, recalling that muscle energy is a direct technique, we're going to want to position our radial head to its restricted barrier. So if we had an anterior radial head, we want to position it posteriorly. We're going to be able to do that by entering a position that's very similar to our diagnosis with our middle finger at the radial head and then our thumb medial to the brachioradialis on the anterior aspect of the radial head. We're going to use our thumb to push the radial head posteriorly. Then we're going to take our other hand and grasp the distal forearm. But we want to make sure that our uh, thenar eminence is on the uh, posterior aspect of the radius. Now here, we're going to pronate and push the radial head posteriorly until we get to a restricted barrier. Then we're going to have our patient uh, supinate against our isometric resistance. So go ahead and twist your hand up against me. And we're going to provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds and then you can relax. So our patient's going to relax, we're going to relax as well, but hold our same position. And then after a few moments, we'll feel that radial head glide a little bit more posteriorly into a new restricted barrier, and we will follow it there by inducing a little bit more posterior glide and a little bit more pronation. Go ahead and push against me. Again, for three to five seconds, we're providing isometric resistance. Go ahead and relax. We relax, they relax. We wait a few seconds. We now follow the radial head to the new restricted barrier with a little posterior glide and a little more pronation. And then push again. And then relax. Good. And then we're going to take it to its last barrier. As an optional element, we can also add a passive stretch into more further pronation and posterior glide. Then we return them back to neutral and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. If instead we had a posterior radial head, we can uh, take that same position, but now we're going to emphasize our contact on the posterior aspect of the radial head to glide it anterior to its restricted barrier. Also on the distal radius, we're going to supinate, but then we're going to use our uh, thenar eminence on the anterior aspect of that distal radius to provide sufficient isometric resistance. So supination, anterior glide at the radial head, and then we're going to have our patient pronate against us while we provide an isometric resistance. So go ahead and flip your hand over. And after three to five seconds, we'll have them relax. You can relax now, and then we're going to relax as well. We wait one to two seconds, and then we'll follow to the next restricted barrier with a little bit of further supination and anterior glide using our finger. Go ahead and push again. And then relax. They relax, we relax, and we move to the next restricted barrier, and then push again, and then relax. And then again, we move to the next rest restricted barrier, and once we've performed it three to five times, we can add an optional passive stretch, then return our patient back to neutral, and reassess for somatic dysfunction.